हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू द चैनल इग्नू डी एन एच ई ऑनलाइन क्लासेस माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर आयुषी वी आर स्टडिंग डी एन एच ई वन एंड टिल नाउ वी हैव कम्प्लीटेड फोर यूनिट्स नाउ लेट्स मूव फर्दर टू द नेक्स्ट यूनिट दैट इज यूनिट फाइव द माइक्रोन्यूट्रियस पार्ट सेकेंड मिनरल्स टूडे वी विल स्टडी इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ मिनरल्स वॉट आर मिनरल्स एंड इट्स कैटेगरीज मिनरल्स रिक्वायर्ड इन लार्जर अमाउंट्स minerals required in smaller amounts and at last like we have been going through the questions in this unit also we will see what type of questions can be asked in exam so let's start with introduction definition of minerals minerals are defined as those elements which largely remain as ash when plant or animal tissues are completely burnt minerals are inorganic elements regulatory and protective functions are performed by both vitamins and minerals there are 19 different minerals present in human body but their amounts varies some important minerals found in our body are calcium phosphorus iron iodine sodium potassium zinc and chloride all these minerals are derived from food we eat minerals are divided into two categories first minerals required in larger amounts they are calcium phosphorus sodium potassium chloride and magnesium second is mineral required in small amount they are iron iodine zinc and copper let's start with minerals required in larger amounts these are calcium phosphorus sodium potassium chloride and magnesium which are required in larger amounts by the body we will discuss each one separately in detail these minerals constitutes more than 3/4 of the total mineral content of the body so calcium and phosphorus as compared to other minerals in our body calcium and phosphorus are present in largest amount that is they account for 75% of total mineral content of the body human body contains 1200 grams of calcium most of which is present in bones and teeth and the remaining in soft tissues and in the body fluids if we talk about phosphorus it is 400 to 700 grams contained in body like calcium most of it is also present in bones and teeth and remaining in soft tissues and body fluids functions firstly we will see their common functions and then their individual functions so there are two important functions of calcium and phosphorus first one is development of bones and teeth as we have read earlier that calcium and phosphorus are mainly present in bones and teeth ratio of calcium to phosphorus in body is roughly 2 is to 1 calcium in bone combines with phosphorus some other minerals and water to form a compound and this compound provide rigidity and firmness to the bones teeth like the bones also require calcium for their proper development now you can understand that due to this reason calcium's need is most during the growing years second function is regulation of body processes calcium and phosphorus are important for building bones and teeth and they also perform regulatory functions as well these we will study individually functions of calcium it helps in regulating the contraction and relaxation of muscles especially that of the heart it also regulates the passage of substances into and out of the cells it is also helpful in conveying messages from one nerve cell to another calcium plays an important role in clotting of blood functions of phosphorus phosphorus helps in formation of a substance which aids in transport of fat in the blood it helps in synthesis of certain coenzymes which play a crucial role in metabolism third function is formation of certain basic genetic material what is genetic material genetic material is involved in passing on of specific characteristics from parents to children 
Another important function of phosphorus is capture and storage of vital energy in the cells of many tissues by forming a high energy compound. Muscle tissue is a prominent example where phosphorus helps in energy storage and thus fuels muscle contraction. Food sources of calcium are milk and milk products like curd, cottage cheese are excellent sources. Fish and especially dried fish and other seafoods provide substantial quantities of calcium. These were animal sources. Some plant sources are ragi and pulses. They also provide substantial amounts of calcium. Green leafy vegetables also contain good amounts of calcium. Others like coconut, almonds, walnuts have a fairly good amount of calcium. Food sources of phosphorus. It is seen that those diets which furnishes enough protein and calcium would normally provide sufficient phosphorus. Other excellent sources of phosphorus are eggs, milk, poultry and fish. And cereals, these are also rich sources. Absorption and Utilization of Calcium Calcium is absorbed from upper part of intestine. The total calcium we consume, only 20 or 30% of it gets absorbed and the rest is excreted in the feces. Then the absorbed calcium is used to perform various functions. Some part of absorbed calcium is also excreted in urine, but its amount is very small. You might be thinking that why only small part of calcium gets absorbed from the diet. What is the reason behind it? So let's see what are factors which influence calcium absorption. So calcium absorption depends on three factors, body need, nutrients in diet and inhibitors in diet. First is body need. It is seen that the efficiency of absorption of calcium increases during period of rapid growth that is infancy, childhood, pregnancy and lactation. So here we reach a conclusion that when the body's demand for calcium increases, the absorption of calcium also increases to meet this increased demand. Next is nutrients in the diet. There are certain nutrients which improves the absorption of calcium. These are vitamin D, protein and carbohydrate, which are present in diet, which help to improve absorption of calcium. There is another mineral present in diet, which alters the absorption of calcium. This is phosphorus. Excess phosphorus tends to lower calcium absorption. Third one is inhibitors. Like we saw, certain substances which increase the absorption of calcium. In the same way, there are some inhibitors that is substances present in food which hinder calcium absorption. Cereals and green leafy vegetables are rich in calcium. But all the calcium present in these foods is not available to the body. This is because these food items have some substances present in them which bind calcium and inhibits its absorption. Absorption of Phosphorus Absorption of phosphorus takes place from upper part of small intestine. A considerable amount of phosphorus is present in cereals, pulses and nuts, but in a bound form which is not absorbed. Body can only take up the free form of phosphorus which after absorption is used by body and it performs various functions which have we have learned earlier. Next one after calcium and phosphorus is sodium. An adult body contains about 120 grams of sodium and most of which is present in extracellular fluid. What is extracellular fluid? Extracellular fluid refers to the fluid which is present outside the cell. An intracellular fluid is that fluid which is present inside the cell. One of the examples of this extracellular fluid is blood plasma. Blood has two parts, cells and plasma. The term plasma refers to the fluid part of the blood. Functions of sodium First one is regulating the balance of extracellular and intracellular fluid. Sodium is principal mineral present in extracellular fluid. 
and it is responsible for maintaining the fluid balance that is maintaining a balance between the fluid present inside the cells and the fluid circulating outside the cells so this balance is maintained by sodium along with another mineral called as potassium regulating the alkalinity and acidity of the body fluids sodium makes the body fluids alkaline and another mineral chloride present in the body fluids makes it acidic so the sodium and chloride combines together in the fluid and helps in maintaining the balance between alkalinity and acidity of the body fluids next one is aiding in passage of messages from one nerve cell to another that is sodium helps in conduction of nerve impulses at junction of two nerve cells next is sodium also help in the contraction of muscles and last one is like sodium regulates the fluid balance in the same way it also regulates the passage of substances into and out of the cell food sources of sodium common table salt that is the salt that we use in food preparation is the principal source of sodium 1 teaspoon of salt provides almost 200 2000 mg of sodium other sources are milk egg white meat poultry fish green leafy vegetables and pulse absorption and excretion of sodium sodium is absorbed in digestive tract and is used for various body functions and the excess amount of sodium is lost from body through urine sweat and feces but there are certain conditions in which sodium losses increase these are hot weather due to increased sweating or any disease in which water is lost from body like diarrhea excessive sodium loss is not good as it affects the fluid balance of the body so in such cases intake of both fluid and salt should be increased to make up for the loss the major regulation of sodium in body is done by kidneys by varying the amounts of urine excreted when intake of sodium increases its excretion also increases and when intake decreases excretion also decreases and this is how the concentration of sodium is maintained within the normal limits in the body next is potassium potassium is present in twice amount as sodium in the body approximately 250 grams of potassium is contained in the body and most of this is present in cells that is intracellular fluid when we go through the functions of potassium we will find that the functions of sodium and potassium are interlinked functions of potassium regulation of the balance of intracellular and extracellular fluid this function is performed by combined effect of sodium and potassium this helps in maintaining the fluid balance next is regulation of the alkalinity and acidity of body fluids potassium combines with chloride and help to maintain the acidity and alkalinity of the body fluids role in muscle activity potassium has a significant role in the activity of skeletal and heart muscle it helps in the transmission of messages which results in the contraction of muscle tissue food sources are meat poultry and fish these are good sources of potassium among plant foods pulses fruits vegetables especially the green leafy vegetables are good sources the water of the tender coconut is the best source of potassium other fruits and vegetables that contain potassium are bananas potatoes carrots tomatoes and lemons whole grain cereals also provide good amounts of potassium absorption and excretion potassium is absorbed from upper part of intestine after absorption it gets used up to perform various body functions and the excess amount of potassium is excreted in the urine and feces next is chloride 
The body contains approximately 100 grams of chloride and most of this is found in the extracellular fluid and rest of the chloride is present inside the cell. Chloride is present in the extracellular fluid as sodium chloride and in the cell as potassium chloride. Functions Functions of sodium, potassium and chloride are closely interlinked. Chloride combines with sodium and potassium and helps in regulating fluid balance and acidity and alkalinity of body fluids. Food sources are like plant foods but most important sources of chloride in our diet is common table salt that is sodium chloride. Absorption and excretion Chloride is readily absorbed from the upper part of intestine. Excess chloride is excreted in the urine and to a lesser extent through the sweat and feces. Magnesium Adult human body contains approximately 20 to 25 grams of magnesium. About 60 to 70 percent of magnesium is present in the bones in the combination with calcium and phosphorus and the remaining 30 to 40 percent is distributed in various tissues and body fluids, mostly in the intracellular fluid. Functions Regulating the passage of substances into and out of the cells. Next is maintaining the activity of many enzymes. Magnesium functions as coenzymes in the metabolism. This acts in the same way as we had seen earlier that vitamin B complex group also acts as coenzymes. Magnesium is also involved in process of mineralization. Earlier we had seen that calcium and phosphorus helps in building bones and teeth. So magnesium also helps in the same way. Magnesium also helps in maintaining the functions of nervous system that is by helping in the passage of messages from one nerve cell to another. Another function is that it helps in maintaining smooth muscle action and last function is that it is involved in the process of building proteins. Sources of Magnesium Plant foods like nuts, oil seeds, pulses and whole grains are concentrated source of magnesium. Among seafoods, shellfish is particularly rich in magnesium. Other foods which contain appreciable amounts of magnesium include dark green leafy vegetables, peas, lotus stem, fish, seafoods and meat. Absorption and Excretion of Magnesium it is absorbed from small intestine. The absorption of magnesium in the body is somewhat similar to that of calcium. When the body's demand increases, the absorption also increases. So, as to meet the increased demand. As we know that there are some inhibitors that interfere with calcium absorption. In the same way, presence of inhibitors in the diet also interfere with magnesium absorption. The excretion of magnesium by the body is regulated by the kidneys. We have studied about the minerals required in larger amounts. Now let's move to the second part of this unit. Minerals required in smaller amounts. These minerals are called trace elements. These are iron, iodine, zinc and copper. First one is iron. Iron content in body is only 3 to 5 grams and most of it is found in the blood, about 75% of total content. About 5% is present in all cells and tissues, especially muscle tissues contain a little iron and remaining 20% is stored in body organs like liver, spleen, kidney and bone marrow. Functions Iron plays an important role in the body. Though its content in body is very tiny, but it is one of the most important minerals. So, its first function is oxygen transportation. We have studied in previous units that blood has two components, that is blood cells and blood plasma. One of the cells is RBCs, that is red blood cells. 
as the name indicates it is red in color and it is due to a pigment called hemoglobin present in it iron is present in the heme part of hemoglobin hemoglobin is necessary for transport of oxygen to the tissues and in turn helps in carrying carbon dioxide from tissues to the lungs and from lungs this carbon dioxide is then exhaled out second function is provision of oxygen for muscle contraction iron is also present in muscle in the form of myoglobin myoglobin has the capacity to store oxygen this oxygen is used for muscle contraction and for other immediate needs of the muscle cells next is promotion of oxidation within cells iron helps in releasing of energy locked up in carbohydrates fats and protein molecules by facilitating their complete oxidation another important role of iron is in maintenance of specific brain functions like immediate memory capacity to learn and attention span next is iron forms a vital component of certain enzymes and substances that aid in metabolism iron has a protective function too like vitamin a iron too helps in preventing infections food sources liver and organ meats in animal foods and plant foods include green leafy vegetables cereals pulses like soya bean jaggery also contain fair amounts of iron absorption of iron absorption of iron takes place from upper part of intestine absorption from animal food is high and absorption from many of the plant sources is very low because there are certain substances present in plant foods which bind iron and hinder its absorption these substances are called inhibitors for example some plant foods such as green leafy vegetables and cereals contain fairly substantial amounts of iron but unfortunately they also contain inhibitors which prevent much of the iron from being absorbed on the other hand there are substances like protein and vitamin c present in foods that aid in the absorption of iron and these substances can be called enhancers so let's see some foods which act as enhancers these are protein rich foods like milk and vitamin c rich foods like oranges lime amla and guava if these foods are included in diet will promote absorption of iron storage and excretion after absorption iron is transported by blood to the body cells where it performs its varied functions and some amount of iron is stored in liver spleen kidney and bone marrow how excretion of iron takes place very small amount of iron is lost through sweat and urine in case of women apart from this loss fairly substantial amount of iron is lost in the menstrual flow next is iodine this is last mineral we are going to discuss in detail iodine is another important mineral required in very small amount which amounts to only 20 to 25 mg maximum concentration of this mineral is found in thyroid gland which is located in neck region functions iodine is a component of hormone thyroxine which is secreted by thyroid gland this thyroxine hormone regulates the rate of oxidation within the cells if this regulation does not takes place both physical and mental growth will be affected iodine also help in the functioning of nerve and muscle tissues food sources those vegetables which are grown in coastal areas where iodine content of soil is high so they have substantial amounts of iodine on contrary in the hilly areas the iodine content of both soil and water is low hence the crops grown in such areas contain little iodine other best sources of iodine is seafood like fish and shellfish 
areas where soils are deficient in iodine so the foods grown in such areas would also be poor in iodine in such situation it becomes important to ensure that iodized salt forms a part of the dietary of daily diet there are certain plant foods like cabbage cauliflower radish lady's finger groundnuts and oil seeds contain substances called as goitrogens which interfere with the body's ability to produce and use thyroxine goitrogens can be easily destroyed on thorough cooking absorption and excretion dietary iodine is absorbed in small intestine in the form of iodides these are carried by blood to the thyroid gland about one third of this iodine is picked up by thyroid gland and rest of it is excreted other minerals are zinc and copper these are present in trace amounts in the body but they perform certain vital functions zinc is essential for growth and like iron it has a protective function as well next is copper it helps in hemoglobin synthesis and is an essential constituent of certain enzymes zinc and copper are widely distributed in nature and are present in indian diet for quick reference you can use this chart on minerals these are questions of this unit and also go through the questions given in check your progress exercise 1 2 3 and 4 and in the next video we will study next unit that is unit 6 planning balanced diets